This is Red's latest camera, the V Raptor X. We've had it in our studio now for the last few days and have been hard at work running it through some testing, which we'll be covering in a future in depth video. So make sure to keep an eye out for that coming soon. But today, let's take a look at what's new with the Raptor X. First off, as you could probably tell, the Raptor X shares a lot with the original V Raptor and the XLX shares a lot with the existing XL camera bodies. However, there are a few subtle physical changes on the outside and a good amount of internal changes too. This includes boards for improved processing, new and improved audio preamps, and the star of the show, its new 8K VistaVision global shutter sensor. This new sensor is incredible. From our initial testing, it looks to combine the excellent image quality and performance of the original Raptor VV sensor with the benefits that come from a global shutter used in cameras like the Komodo. The big benefit of a global shutter sensor is the lack of rolling shutter artifacts, such as jello or split framing, which the Raptor VV sensor did suffer from in certain scenarios. This new sensor solves that and still provides the same excellent image quality of the Raptor VV, which is pretty impressive. Red have rated the dynamic range at the same 16.5 stops as the original Raptor sensor, and it does look incredibly close to that. Global shutter sensors usually have performance drawbacks over rolling shutter, so the performance of this new sensor really is something. We managed to take out the Raptor X to film some real world stuff, and the image the camera can produce is just as fantastic as the regular Raptor. Because of this new global shutter, Red have managed to introduce two new functions that they are putting under the global vision umbrella, an extended highlight mode and phantom track. Phantom Track is a virtual production tool that allows for the capture of two distinct tracks in camera for productions using a technique similar to Ghost Frame, where multiple backgrounds can be flashed on an LED wall and captured or broadcast simultaneously and independently. This means that you can have two different distinct recordings recorded in camera, with one having a Unreal environment on, for example, and one with a green screen background. The Komodo has been very popular with virtual production because of its global shutter. So I can see this camera being popular too, especially with this cool new feature. Extended Highlights is a new mode in the camera which allows you to capture between three and four stops of extra information in your highlights. We've done some pretty extensive testing on this and it really is an awesome function, but does have its limitations, as you would expect. You can toggle this on and off in camera and in post, where if you don't want it, you just have a regular take. It does cap your ISO to a max of 1600, limit your shutter speed options, half your available frame rates of the camera, and double your data rates. But in scenes where you need that little extra to not clip, this is really helpful. It also really excelled in our latitude tests because of this, but our full video will really dive into this and the rest of the sensor's performance, and compare it to others as well. So if you have any questions, let us know. With the release of the X, Red have also fully announced the compact EVF. This builds off their DSMC2 viewfinder, but does improve it in several ways. It features a very similar 1080p micro OLED display, camera control via the user assignable buttons, and an improved eye cup design. On camera, it's really nice, with good light leak control, improved color over the DSMC2 version, and the image is clear from a range of viewing angles. To get this new viewfinder on DSMC3 cameras, you'll need to use the adapter plate A which uses the POGO on top of the camera to provide a 16 pin output here. This is compatible with the Komodo X and Raptor cameras, not the Komodo unfortunately though. This new adapter will also allow you to use the DSMC2 EVF, which will recognize what camera you are plugging it into when going between DSMC2 and 3, which is nice. With this, RED also released a new 15mm based EVF support system and an extension arm, which would be great if you want to use an eyepiece leveler. The new mounting system is nice, and I found it quite easy to reposition it as I needed to, and it feels very robust when rigged up. This does help complete Red's ecosystem of accessories now. A solid EVF solution has been something that people have wanted for a while now, so it's great to finally see this hit the market. The X is priced this much higher than the existing VV8K sensor, which isn't too surprising given the sensor difference. For existing Raptor owners wanting to experience these new features and who want the benefits that come from a full frame global shutter sensor, RED will be offering an upgrade program for existing Raptor and XL owners. This is a camera upgrade that includes replacing the sensor, some camera housing, and a few boards. If you want more information on this, please get in touch with us via the details below.
Anyway, this is our very short video going over the top level specs of the Raptor X. Our full video will be coming out basically as soon as possible, so make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss it. And let us know if you have any questions in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.